ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له وان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد فان خير الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار اما بعد If someone were to ask us, each one of us, are you an envious person? Do you harbor hasad in your heart? What would our answer be? Of course, we take care of our external appearances so that we don't show others that we are envious. But deep inside our hearts, are we envious of others when we see that they have what we don't have? Do we feel jealous? Do we wish internally that they would lose the ni'mah that they have the blessing that they would have in order for us to feel better this hasad that envy that jealousy is a serious disease of the diseases of the heart and it yields many other illnesses it doesn't really stop at what you have on the inside it ruins your life and ruins your hereafter because it invites many other sins backbiting assault wishing the worst for your brother and for your sister hasad it is said it is the first sin to be committed in the heavens and the first sin to be committed on earth and allah azza wa jalla when he tells us these stories He tells us these stories so that you realize that it is hard to escape hasad unless you actively combat it in yourself and unless you actively protect yourself from it because there are two things that you're supposed to do when it comes to hasad when we hear hasad envy ain we often think about us being the recipients of it so we wonder how can i protect myself from it and if you read surah al-falaq wa min sharri hasad in idha hasad you're well aware that this is an enough evil that allah azza wa jalla wants you repeatedly to ask him protection from protect me from the evil of the envy when they envy of the envious when they envy you repeatedly are asking allah protect me from that evil So we only think about it in terms of I may be envied how do I protect myself from it and that is a legitimate concern that we should have as we shall see insha'Allah but there is another side of it for envy to happen there needs to be an envious person and the envious person needs to treat his and her heart so that they don't envy others and it's not really only about me inflicting harm on another person when i see them having something beautiful it's about what it does to me first of all so the first sin that was committed is when iblis looked at adam alayhi salam and envied him for the favors that allah had given to him and i want you to understand what hasad and kibr arrogance did to iblis because we each one of us is not immune from that as you will see He was worshiping with the angels and iblis was from, from the jinn. He had access to the higher realms. He could speak to Allah Azza wa Jalla directly and hear Allah back. And because of envy and jealousy, he was kicked out of heavens and was doomed to hellfire. and because of envy he had vowed to misguide the children of adam till the day of judgment so it's not enough that he rejected directly allah's command he said if i'm sinking everybody else will sink with me and that is the fire of jealousy on earth the two children of adam alayhi salam when they submitted a qurban an offering 
فتقبل من أحدهما ولم يتقبل من الآخر قال لأقتلنك One of them, his offering was accepted. The other saw that mine was rejected. Rather than go back to himself and accuse it and say, why is it that I wasn't sincere enough? What did he say? I'm going to kill you. Because you got what I did not have and this I want you to understand is a consequence of jealousy. It doesn't stop at what you feel. He said, I'm going to kill you. Hasad leads to murder and killing. I'm going to kill you. And his pious brother said what? قَالَ إِنَّمَا يَتَقَبَّلُ اللَّهُ مِنَ الْمُتَّقِينَ Allah only accepts from the pious. Meaning, in other words, if you see me having something that you don't have, if I see you having something that I don't have, why should I be angry with you? Think about it. Let that sink. Why should I be angry with you? Allah accepts from the pious. You want the same thing that I have? Be pious like me. That's the path to it. Killing me will bring you no joy and no comfort, except it will add to your sin. And what, is he, what did he do? As you all well know, he killed his brother. And then Rasulullah said that every person who is killed on this earth unjustly, a portion of that sin will go to the first son of Adam who killed his brother, because he's the first person to introduce murder on earth. Jealousy and envy led to that disastrous consequence. The brothers of Yusuf السلام, what did they do to him? They committed such great injustice towards his, their brother and their father. They faked his death. They banished the, their brother. They don't know what's going to happen to him. And in fact, in the beginning, they wanted to kill him. That was the proposal. But they say, Allah, just punish him. And they did not know where he will end, how he will be treated. Such cold, cruel hearts. How could you treat your brother like that and your elderly father like this? What is the thing that agitated the heart that turned it against your own family? Envy again. And when Rasulullah came, some of the people of the book, and some of the polytheists in Mecca, they rejected the message of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why? Out of what? Envy. And nothing else. And he says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَدَّ كَثِيرٌ مِّنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ لَوْ يَرُدُّونَكُمْ مِّنْ بَعْدِ إِيمَانِكُمْ كُفَّارًا حَسَدًا مِّنْ عِنْدِ أَنفُسِهِمْ مِّنْ بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُمُ الْحَقِّ He says, many of the people of the book would want to turn you after your belief into disbelievers. Why? Allah Azza wa Jal says, حَسَدًا Out of envy from themselves. After they knew what the truth is. So here, the issue is not ignorance. They know very well that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the prophet of Allah. And they know that the believers are following the path of Allah azza wa jal. And yet, what did they want? They want to turn all the believers into disbelief. Why? Out of envy. Why should they get it and not us? Why should Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam be a prophet and not one of us? Because of envy, they reject the message of Islam. Am yahsudun al-nasa ala ma atahum Allah min fadli. As he says subhanahu wa ta'ala in another ayah. To the extent he said, يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْجِبْتِ وَالطَّاغُوتِ وَيَقُولُونَ لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا هَؤُلَاءِ أَهْدَى مِنَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا سَفِيلًا Out of envy, they hid the truth so much that the non-believers of Mecca, they would go to the people of the book and they would say to them, you have messages from Allah Azza wa previously. Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, this man, is he better or are we? Out of envy, they will tell them, you are better than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and they know the polytheism that they practice. But it's all out of envy. And the, 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 as we said, the disbelievers of Mecca, وَقَالُوا لَوْ لَا أُنزِلَ هَذَا الْقُرْآنُ عَلَىٰ رَجُلٍ مِّنَ الْقَرْيَتَيْنِ عَظِيمٍ it says, why hasn't this Qur'an been revealed on one of the, on a great man from the two cities, great cities of Mecca and Al-Ta'if? Why Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Why him? 
and they knew the virtue of Muhammad and the character of Muhammad, but they were just offering excuses. And then Allah Azza wa says, Ahum yaqsimuna rahmata rabbik. Are they the ones who divide the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal and of His favors? And this is here, Allah Azza wa is not only He's talking to them, but He's talking to us as well. When you envy someone for whatever reason, Allah is saying, are you the one in charge of dispensing Allah's mercy and His favors? نَحْنُ خَسَمْنَا بَيْنَهُمْ مَعِيشَتَهُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَرَفَعْنَا بَعْضَهُمْ فَوْقَ بَعْضٍ دَرَجَاتٍ لِيَتَّخِذَ بَعْضُهُمْ بَعْضًا سُخْرِيَّةٍ وَرَحْمَةُ رَبِّكَ خَيْرٌ مِمَّا يَجْمَعُونَ It says, we are the one who dispensed worldly favors among them and we raised some of them above others so that they will be in need of each other. And then he says, and the mercy of Allah is better than what they collect. Meaning that look at each other. Some of us are rich and some of us are not. Some of us are healthy and some of us are not. Some of us are tall and thin and some of us are not. Some of us are handsome, some of us are not. So Allah Azza wa is saying, who is the one who divided it this way? Think about it. Allah Azza wa did. And he varied this so that you would need each other. And you would thank Allah Azza wa for the favors of Allah when you see it. And you would have compassion towards each other. There is wisdom behind it. And then Allah Azza wa Jal redirects you from the dunya to the akhirah. And he says, but the rahmah of Allah Azza wa Jal is better than the worldly things that you're envious about. It's better than the money that you think so-and-so has but you don't have. Where does envy come from? Like why do why are we envious of each other? It stems first of all from a displeasure with the decrees of Allah Azza wa Jal. That when you think about it, if someone is famous and you're not, someone is successful and you're not, when you object to it, to whom and to what are you objecting? Except first of all to Allah Azza wa Jal, the Almighty. To His wisdom and to His power. Thinking that you could do things better. And Allah Azza wa is telling you, this is how I divided it. Can we dare go back to Allah Azza wa and say, you are unfair? I have to have more and the other person has to have less? Isn't this all a test from Allah Azza wa What you have and what you do not have? Don't we also understand that the dunya that is given to some and denied to others, that that in itself is a test and that in itself could be a source of catastrophe. If not thanked or used well, you could look at someone who's famous and say, I wish I could be as famous as he is. And that is very short-sighted because you don't know if that fame is taking that person to heaven or hell. Right or wrong? I wish I could be rich. How do you know that that person is going to end up in heaven with all the money that he has? Or that Allah, if he were to give you that money, you would disbelieve. How do you know? Do you think Allah Azza wa Jal gives or does not give without thought? Without wisdom? Without a plan? Without wanting the best for you? So it really stems in the beginning from what? From not trusting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And not, again, second thing, not being happy with what you already have. <coughs> and if you and I, if we fail to thank the little that we have, how can you thank when Allah gives you more? So if Allah gives you $100 today, and you fail to thank a hundred dollars, how could you thank a thousand? Because the more that Allah gives you, the more that is going to distract you, right? Ask those who are rich, ask those who are famous, ask those who are athletic. What is consuming their time? The akhirah, the next life, or the dunya? On average. So the more that Allah is going to give you, the more that that is going to distract you. So if, if the, for the little that you have, you're unwilling, unable, incapable of thanking Allah. 
How will you thank him when he gives you more? So sometimes Allah tells you, I'll give you what you can manage. It's exactly how when Allah tells you, I will not put on, a, on you a burden more than one you can carry. You're not going to be sicker than what you can handle. I'm not going to afflict you with something that you cannot take. With that in mind, Allah also tells you, I'm not going to give you more than what you can handle when it comes to riches and fame and health and what have you. Because if I give it to you, it corrupts you. So why should you look at somebody else and compare yourself to him and you're not him? Why should you look at what they have and say, I want what they have, though that thing could be very bad for you? Also, it stems from loving the dunya and ignoring the akhirah. You're not envious of anyone, typically, unless it's about the dunya. So-and-so is richer, so-and-so has kids, his kids are successful, his business is successful. Most of our envy comes about the dunya. And the dunya in the sight of Allah Azza wa Jal is less than a mosquito's wing. Is less than a mosquito's wing. It is irrelevant to Allah and it's irrelevant to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And to that he said alayhi salatu wa sallam, la hasada illa fithnatayn. There should be no envy except in two things. Rajulun atahu Allahu al-Qur'an wa rajulun atahu Allahu malan fahuwa yunfiquh. Or kama qal. He says only two kinds of people can be envied. And that type of envy is not a vicious envy. It's an envy when you look at them and you say, I wish I have what they have without diminishing anything that they have. Two things. Someone who has given knowledge or when given the Quran and he's teaching it. And someone whom Allah had made rich, but it doesn't stop there. Allah had made him rich and he spends that money for Allah's sake. These are the two things and these are the two people that you can look at and say, I want to be like them. Anyone else or anything else, he said, no envy. Don't look. Don't wish. Because everything else is dunya. And everything else perishes. And you should not want to compete for the sake of the dunya. He says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَلَا تَتَمَنَّوا مَا فَضَّلَ اللَّهُ بِهِ بَعْضَكُمْ عَلَى بَعْضٍ do not wish what Allah had favored some of you over others. Don't look. And included in this ayah, men looking at women or women looking at men and say they have what we do not have. No, Allah had blessed each, he says. Concern yourself with what Allah had given you and don't compare yourself with others. Don't look at what they have. Don't wish well for what they have. So what happens if inadvertently unavoidably, I notice that they have something that I don't and I feel that bitterness on the inside, that emptiness on the inside. What do I do? What does Allah say? Allah min Ask Allah for his favor. You don't need to hate so-and-so because of what they have. You don't need to, when you see them happy with their family and their spouse, wish them destruction and dissolution of family just because you feel bitter. By the way, feeling bitter is natural. It's absolutely natural. I'm not successful or not as successful. I'm not, I don't feel happy, I'm not as happy. Feeling bitter is natural. And the shaitan will take advantage of it and make you hate everybody, including yourself. If you surrender to envy. But why should you? You see them having something that you don't? The easiest thing and the coolest thing upon the heart for you to say what? Ya Allah, bless them with what they have. And grant me similar things if it's good for me. Ya Allah, grant me similar things if it's good for me. You turn those negative, bitter feelings into a dua. And once you ask Allah Azza wa Jal, as he said, Wasalullaha min fadlih, expect the best from him subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you don't need to wish ill for anybody. You don't need to be competing with them. He said, alayhi salatu wa salam, in a hadith, la tanafasu wa la tahasadu wa la tadabaru. Do not compete with each other. Do not envy each other and do not boycott each other because it's a chain. 
If you compete for the dunya, you will be envious. And if you're envious, you'll boycott each other and plot against each other. So he said, don't compete for the dunya. And if somebody has a question about excellence, how do we achieve excellence in the dunya if we do not compete? He says, Muslims do not compete for glory or for money. Muslims compete in the dunya to please Allah Azza wa and help people. So you can excel in the dunya, but the motivation is very different than the capitalist motivate, motivation. It's not about you, it's not about me, it's not about money, it's about helping everybody that you see, and above all of that is about pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah protect us from envy. الحمد لله رب العالمين حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه وأصلي وأسلم على رسوله محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم The consequence of envy a person when he they receive it there is something specifically called العين الحسد is a more general inclusive name of it where a person could be envious of things that they see and things that they hear about العين specifically is to be envious of something that you see and that could adversely affect the person who receives it by the will of Allah Azza wa Jal. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ta'awwadhu billahi min al-ayn, seek Allah's refuge and protection from al-ayn, because it is true, and if there is something would ever compete with Allah's destiny, it would be al-ayn, which is the evil eye. We could translate that. If anything could compete with Allah's destiny, meaning it is so potent, it is so strong, that he said sallallahu alaihi wasallam in another hadith that a person could climb a mountain and fall because of envy or a camel could be walking and be cooked and killed because of envy someone looks at it admires it and either they wish for it to perish to to fail or simply simply they admire it without mentioning Allah's name and asking for barakah. And that happened at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where there was once a sahabi and another passed by and he saw him and he saw his skin and he admired his skin, he admired his body. And that other sahabi who was envied fell immediately ill. And they went to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, this happened to so and so. All of a sudden, he says, do you accuse someone? Do you suspect someone? They said, so and so said this. And once he said it, that person fell ill. And he said, alayhi salatu was salam, ala ma yaqtulu ahadukum akhah. Why would any one of you kill his brother like that? Ida ra'ayta min akhika ma yu'jibuka, fad'u lahu bil baraka. If you see something that you admire from your brother, ask Allah to bless it. Ask Allah to bless him, meaning, ya Allah, barik alayh, barik alayh. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commanded that that person who envied Wash his hand, wash his face, wash his hand to the elbows, wash his knees, feet, and then his lower garment. And they took that water, they poured it on that man who was envied, and Allah Azza wa removed that affliction immediately. And that is a way of treating envy from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that is immediate once a person suspects or knows that so-and-so is responsible for it. And you could actually you could actually cause your own affliction. When you look at yourself or something that you love, you don't wish them harm. You just admire, but you don't say barakah. That's why he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, if you look at yourself, your children and your money, and you admire what you see, ask for barakah for it. Otherwise, there is that possibility that you could hit what the ones that you love with your own eye. So if you look at yourself in the mirror, you look at your children, you look at your spouse, you look at your house, and you admire what you see, don't stop there. What should you say? Barakallahu alayhi. Barakallahu alayhi. Ya Allah, bless it. And make that a habit that whatever you see that pleases you from yourself and others, so that will protect yourself and them from envy, say Barakallahu alayhi. Barakallahu fi. May Allah bless that. May Allah bless this. Now, how do you protect yourself from it? 
He said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in a hadith, ta'awadu billahi min al-ayn. Right? Seek Allah's protection from it. He went, he once saw a woman, a young woman, a girl, and there was discoloration on her face. He says, what is with her face? There is nadra. Right? There is a look, that evil look, and that evil look could come from humans, and it can also come from the jinn. He said also, he saw some young boys and he said to those young boys, why do I see them thin and sickly? So their mother said, they're easily envied. He says, make, give them ruqya. So you want to involve yourself, surround yourself with a ruqya to protect yourself from envy and to do that continuously. And the best ruqya that we have is, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقْ قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ And you keep repeating that. So you say it in the evening, you say it in the morning, you say it before you sleep and wipe it over all, all over your body and you say it after each salah. And if you are a person who had been afflicted with envy in particular and you feel it or you suspect it, use ruqya on yourself. Read Quran, wipe it all over your body and keep doing that. If it is really serious, if it is really serious, you could seek a raqi, someone who reads the Quran. And he has experience in it. But make sure that when you are seeking a raqi, you're seeking someone who is recommended, highly trusted, follows the Quran and Sunnah, and is not suspicious in any way. Not anyone who claims to be a raqi is a legitimate person. So if you go to someone and they start asking you for weird things like, give me your middle name or your mother's name or your mother's maiden name or bring me this trace of this or trace of that. Tell me when you were born. Information that no one needs for a ruqya. When they ask for things like that, run away from them. Run away from them. The only thing that you need for a ruqya is for a person to sit and read the Quran. No information on your behalf is needed. So make very sure that if you want to go to someone who's going to read the ruqya, don't pick them from the internet. Don't just go by somebody's recommendation. Go to your masjid and ask for someone who can be trusted because you are dealing with something that is serious. But if you don't need that, keep yourself and your children protected with ruqya. If you have young children, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say to Al-Hasan wa Al-Husayn, أُعِيدُكُمَا بِكَلِمَاتِ اللَّهِ التَّامَّةِ مِنْ كُلِّ شَيْطَانٍ وَهَامَّةِ وَمِنْ كُلِّ عَيْنٍ لَامَّةِ Learn this dua or similar duas or at least the mu'awwidat and day and night protect your children from the ayn. And most importantly, as we conclude, let us also be not those who envy, but those who submit to Allah Azza wa Jal. On the outside, we could be very nice. On the inside, our hearts could be boiling with envy, wishing ill for everybody that we see. So remove that bitterness. Be happy with what Allah had destined for you and me. And ask Allah Azza Jal continuously to keep blessing you and your family. If you find that you have something or you don't have something, ask Allah Azza Jal to give you. Allah is the best of givers and Allah Azza Jal is the best of takers. So we ask Allah Rabbil Alameen, Ya Allah, cleanse our heart from envy and cleanse our heart, uh, bodies from envy. Ya Allah, protect us from envy and ayn, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ya Allah, protect us from envy and ayn, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ya Allah, protect us from hasad and ayn, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ya Allah, if we are afflicted with that, we ask Ya Rabbil Alameen to clear it all completely from our bodies, Ya Arham Arham Rahimeen. And from our, our families and, and from our loved one, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ya Rabbil Alameen, make us of those who meet you with a sound heart. Make us of those who meet you with a submitting heart. Make us of those who meet you with a qalb salim, ya arham ar-rahimin. Allahumma atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qina adhab al-nar. Allahumma ya muqallib al-qulub, thabbit qulubana ala deenik. Allahumma ya musarrif al-qulub, sarrif qulubana ala ta'atik. Allahumma nas'aluk al-jannata wa ma qarraba ilayha min qawlin wa amal. Wa na'udhu bika min al-nar wa ma qarraba ilayha min qawlin wa amal. يا حي يا قيوم برحمتك نستغيث أصلح لنا شأننا كله ولا تكلنا إلى أنفسنا طرفة عين وأقم الصلاة